Hey, y'all. I'm Bud Elliott, and this is Cover Free College Football Summer School. We've done our research on the teams, and now we're bringing on the top team experts from the 24-7 Sports Network to help us fill in the blanks. Please follow us on Twitter at Cover 3 Podcast. That's Cover 3 Podcast. And leave us a five-star review on Apple and Spotify. All right. Class is in session. Hey, guys. I'm Bud Elliott, and welcome back into the Cover 3 Podcast. This is our summer school edition, and today we're going to talk a little South Carolina with the Big Spurs, Hal McGranahan. Hal. Hal. Come on, man. How long have I known you calling you Hal? It's Hal. Hal McGranahan. <laughs> How you been, dude? Doing well. How about yourself? Uh, can't can't complain, man. Just knocking out a whole bunch of these. I think this is the fiftieth we've done, so uh, it is uh, it's a lift. But I'm, I'm learning a whole lot about these teams and uh, kind of changing my mind on on quite a few of them actually as we get the local experts on to discuss them. Uh, South Carolina is a team that I feel like it's had an just an excellent off season overall and, and a nice nice first year under Shane Beamer. Um, you know, seven and six record. I think they finished sixty sixth in the overall kind of meshing of of, of the power ratings. Uh, a team that was certainly, if you know, people listen to the Cover Three Locks Pod, was, was very good to me as far as the preseason bets last year. I thought the over over four and over three and a half and, and four and a half were were very uh, very good buys, and, and they they cashed it. So I was I was loving that mood in, in Columbia's got to be got to be pretty nice, right? Yeah, confidence levels are pretty high around here. Folks are fired up about the way things went last year, uh, exceeding expectations, winning seven games, in, in the fashion that they did. Uh, with the bowl game and, and beating North Carolina and, and playing as well as they did up in Charlotte. We're able to exercise some demons up there at, at that stadium and build some nice momentum with the offseason. Of course, getting all these transfers with Spencer Rattler and Austin Stogner from Oklahoma got the, the ball rolling there and and is really uh, helping build some of that momentum and, and adding to the excitement coming off of year one under under Beamer. So, yeah, folks are fired up and and, and really looking forward to see where this thing can go under on, in year two uh, with the staff. Let, let's start with that offense. So last year, uh, power rated eight, 86th. Um, they, it was effective at times and at other times kind of frustrating to watch. Obviously, the strength of the team was was certainly more on the defensive side. Uh, 96th in rushing efficiency, 60th in passing efficiency. But they, they did lean on the run, obviously. I think teams knew they were, they were largely going to, to lean on the run. So I think that played into it. If you know it's coming, it's a little easier. Uh, to stop at times, but Beamer's now reunited with, with with Spencer Rattler, who was really good in 2020 and and in 2021 had some struggles. Obviously, it's hard to fight off Caleb Williams, uh, if you're number one kid prior year, and you're you're the number one kid in your own year. They they got to be pretty excited about Rattler, though. They are, and and you know, but I I was just double checking Rattler's numbers before we got started from last season, and and granted, like you said, it it wasn't a great season for him, and certainly didn't live up to his expectations or anyone at Oklahoma's expectations, but his completion percentage, yards per attempt, rating, uh, those numbers were all pretty pretty uh, substantially better than uh, really any South Carolina quarterback has put up in the last almost 10 years or so. So if he's somehow able to, to replicate those numbers or come anywhere close to, to matching them or even exceeding them, uh, I, I think it's going to be a, a good season, uh, especially on that side of the ball. Um, granted, it's it's not Lincoln Riley calling plays, and and maybe not some of the same uh, types of of skilled players on the outside that, that he's got to work with. But they've got a pretty good collection of talent, uh, a lot of which is from the portal, um, and and some returning guys, and Josh Van at receiver, and and a stable of running backs that that's pretty talented as well. So, yeah, again, everybody's fired up and excited because there, there, there's reason to be. And and, and I think uh, it, it definitely starts on that side of the ball and, and obviously at quarterback with, with a guy like Rattler. I, I feel like um, teams are going to have to respect the passing game more now. You know, like like last year, I know their their passing game was technically more efficient than the run game. That's kind of a, a stats thing. It's like, of course it was, because everybody was loading up against the run most every chance they got. You know, Rattler... I also had Rattler uh, as a bit unlucky last year. If you look at the number of interceptable passes he threw uh, versus the number that were actually picked, uh, I think DBs just kind of had magnet hands on him last year. I, I don't think he'll he'll maintain a you know just a two to one touch to interception ratio. It'll probably be a little bit better than that, even going to South Carolina. And I, you look at these at these receiving options. You know, Josh Fan. You got Joiner. I think Bell's an interesting kind of flex weapon for you. Stogner comes over at tight end. Corey Rucker from Arkansas State is is he is in right? 
Uh, Corey Rucker, is, he's still finishing up at Arkansas State as we record this. Um, he's, but he'll be in, you know, by the time they get rolling with the summer program. I mean, I, I, we we did the Arkansas State preview with, with, with Jeff from from A State Nation, and uh, he's going to be sorely missed at Arkansas State. And like, that's a nice collection of of, of talent. Like, it may not be like what Bama has, but I feel like a lot of schools out there would really enjoy having that level of talent. Um, and I. I liked Kevin Harris, and I really liked Saquandre White when he had his head screwed on straight. And I feel like you know, a nice redemption story for him there at South Carolina. But Christian Beale Smith was a very patient runner last year for Wake. They're going to miss him. And I think Marshawn Lloyd, he could be kind of a sleeper candidate, right? Am I talking myself into this? Should I be? <laughs> I, I I mean, I'm with you, man. It's uh, with, with Marshawn, obviously, he's he's entering his third year. Uh, his first year, he tore his ACL in the I think it was the second practice and camped at that season. So he was still sort of working his way back last year and, and didn't quite have that same explosiveness. And and you could just tell he went he wasn't quite all the way back. I think maybe confidence had a lot to do with that. You know, you know as you know, Bud, some guys just takes yeah. him a little longer to get to get the the physical part going with the mental part. And 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 he looked really really solid this spring from the handful of times we got to go to practice and watch and. And then, of course, with the spring game, um, if, if you see any of those highlights, he, he looks like the guy he was coming out of high school. So a lot to be excited about there. Um, it, Juju McDowell, who, who's a second-year guy, is, is more of their scat back type of type of deal, who who was pretty productive when, when he got some opportunities last season. Um, and then Rashad Amos, who, who's sort of the fourth back and forgotten man, for, for lack of a better phrase, uh, is really talented in his own right. Hadn't played a lot over the course of his career, but – but they're they're pretty deep, and and yeah, bringing in someone like Christian Bill Smith, who was really productive at Wake Forest, is is going to go a long way. And I think he's just going to kind of do whatever they need him to do. Um, probably be a, more of a versatile type of player, whether it's you know running running in short yardage or, or playing some on special teams, whatever the case may be. Uh, that that group, you know, top to bottom. I mean, I didn't mention Lavasia Carroll, the the Georgia transfer, who's you know trying to figure out how to play running back again since he was a DB at Georgia. So it's a, it's a deep, talented group, and and it's going to be really interesting to see how it shakes out over the over the course of the season. All right, so I reasonable confidence that Rattler's going to be good. I guess we'll wait and see if he's going to be great, but certainly a big upgrade there. Receiver's better than it's been in, in a number of years. Backs, we think, are fine. I got to ask you about this. So I, in looking at this, the offensive line returns, I think, all nine guys who played 100 snaps last year. And this is one of the most experienced offensive lines that I've done. And I've done about 50 of these previews so far. However, looking at like their advanced stats screen, it's it's all red. Like their their blown block percentage run and pass last year was just garbage. And I'm curious, like, are there is is the bet here that the, just the more experience makes these guys better, or are there some young guys waiting in the wings who are gonna come up and steal starting spots or are there guys here who I'm not picking up on that maybe got hurt last year who expect to be back and healthy who are going to take these starting spots? Because that if it's just the same five who played the number of like the, the top snaps last year, I, I mean, they're back, they're more experienced, but they were flat out bad last year at times, even against some of the lesser teams. I'm, I'm, where do you see – I assume you've seen improvement, so why or where? Uh, well, tackle is kind of a, an interesting situation – there, there was a guy who was hurt last year for about half the season, Dylan Wanham, who's started at right tackle since since he was a freshman. Um, however many years ago that was, he's he's entering his his fifth season. Um, another guy who could start a tackle, Jakai Moore, was is sort of banged up last year. He, he's someone they've they're probably going to count on, whether it's as a starter or coming in and and uh, playing behind a couple of the guys who who are coming out of spring as a starter. So. Yeah, it's it's a little bit like like you said, but like you know, you, you got a bunch of guys coming back, but there there have definitely been some issues, and, and some of that may might be talent related. Um, some of it could be what they were doing with the, within the scheme and, and making things a little challenging for those guys up front last season. And and as a staff, they've they've talked about that and and addressed it publicly, and and, and seem to be committed to trying to to take less off of those guys and and make it easier for them, uh, quite frankly. So. Yeah, the interior I think is relatively solid. Eric Douglas, who's been a starter at center for a couple of seasons, and and Javon Gwen, who who's going to play right guard. He's been the right guard for several seasons, and a guy in Vershawn Lee at left guard. I, I 
I think maybe they're better than some of those numbers would indicate. And, and granted, they are what they are. But uh, I, I, I would think that, that it's going to be an improved group this year. And maybe some of that has to do with, with some stuff they're doing on, on within the scheme and, and, again, trying to make things easier for them. But, but you, can't, you can't really ignore uh, starting four quarterbacks over the course of a 13-game season. That, that affects an offensive line, uh, in my opinion, and, and maybe those guys would say otherwise. Um, maybe the coaches would say otherwise, but but if you're if you're rolling a different guy in and out every couple yeah. of games, that's that's going to affect things for for sure. And uh, hey, you could be Virginia where you lost all six players who uh, who, who started the game last year. So that's uh, <laughs> you know pr- perspective. I, I think it's safe to assume this offense makes a pretty good jump this year. Uh, I mean, it, 89th, I, I can't see that again. I, I like you got to think they're going to be top half of college football at the very least, and m- maybe they get. They get to that top third range, then you know, depending on how things fall, and we'll talk defense in a second here. Potentially, like second in the East could be up for grabs if if the offense can get up and you know, become like a top forty, like 89th. If you go like 89th, like 35th or something like that, then there's real potential there. Uh, I, I do want to talk defense with you. Um, obviously, we're, we're running a little bit long, but I, I think it's been a, a fun conversation. We're learning a whole lot. DB should just be lock solid again, right? Like no. No real questions there. I feel like a couple more explosive plays last year allowed than I think you'd like, but they're pretty experienced and uh Kemp Smith is stud. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say don't worry about the group as a whole. And certainly okay. most South Carolina fans wouldn't say that. And, and that's mostly because of what's what's at safety. Um they they brought in Devonnie Reed, a, a graduate transfer from Central Michigan, who was a really solid player there and and stepped right in here and is going to be a starter. Um, and, and part of part of why I said what I said to to start into this was was R.J. Roderick, who's who started for, you know, three and a half years. And um, I, I think he's had some some good moments, but but there's some there have been some bad moments that that are really noticeable. I mean, and, and that, that tends to be the case when, when you're playing safety, like your mistakes are, are really magnified. Um, but he's he's had some some issues over the year, whether it's just you know, taking bad angles, missing tackles, whatever the case may be. Uh, and, and a lot of that sort of sticks with South Carolina fans. So I, I don't want to sit here and, and and talk about a secondary that's just locked and loaded, rock solid, all that kind of stuff, because th- there are some deficiencies uh, at, at safety. Um, and, and there's really not any depth behind those guys either. It's um, of course, there, there are bodies there and, and they've got some a bunch of freshmen coming in. But, you know, during the spring game, bud, um, th- there were walk ons. <laughs> starting at wow, safety. Okay. So that that's sort of where they are with at that position. But at corner, like you said, with with Cam Smith, um, who who's a really talented guy. He he actually played some at nickel during the spring uh because the the returning starter um was out. So they they moved Cam inside to to play there. And it was more at the time when they got started there, it was it was just like, hey, let's let him learn the position, get um more all around as a player, develop more all around as a player and by the end of spring, Shane Beamer's talking like he he was full go, ready to to make Cam Smith the the guy at nickel, and and we'll we'll see how that shakes out clearly. But uh, you return a guy in Darius Rush, who you know this time last year, if if you you were talking about Darius Rush as a starting cornerback, folks would have had some serious concerns, and he he had a really good season, and and is just much improved from from where he was twelve months ago. And Marcellus Dials, a, a, another guy who could get potentially start at cornerback if, if Cam does indeed slide into to that nickel spot. Um and then some other younger guys behind them that uh that are that are pretty good players as well. So it's it's uh it's a pretty solid group, uh especially at cornerback with with maybe some question marks at safety. Um but but uh, again a guy like Devonnie Reed is going to come in and shore things up and, and help them uh really solidify that position as best they can. I'm writing here for my power ratings notes if safety injuries downgrade. Okay. <laughs> yes. um, so linebacker uh, Staley's gone. The kind of the advanced stats hate Brad Johnson, like missed tackle percentage, pretty high, uh, you know, passing game yards allowed uh, per pass fairly high. It is he still projected to start? I, I know, he, you know he played all 13 last year and played you know almost 700 snaps. What what's kind of going on there at linebacker? Yeah, um, Brad Johnson is is one of the two starters at this point, uh, as we see here at the end of April. Um, Sherrod Green, who who was a starter at at the Mike spot, 
going into to last season and after the first couple games. So he, I think it was the second drive or into the first drive in the Georgia game that uh, he, he had an injury and missed the rest of the season. And, and similar story with, with, with Sherrod uh, in 2020 when, when he got injured in the Tennessee game, which was the opener. Um, so assuming Sherrod is healthy and available, he's, he's going to be at one of those two spots. Um, Brad Johnson, like you said, um, is coming back and is a starter now. But I, I think the staff would, would kind of like to see Muhammad Kaba, uh, who's a pretty highly recruited guy coming out of high school, very talented player. And uh, I, I think they really want to see him push and, and maybe get one of those two spots. Um, then they've, they've got a couple other guys and, uh, and Debo Williams, who transferred from Delaware last year, who's uh, who could potentially push for, for time as well. Um, and, and some other some other names in there. But uh, yeah, that that top three and they're base four two five, so they're they're rolling two most of the time. Um, but that but that top three would would be you know not necessarily in this order: Sherrod Green, Brad Johnson, and, and Mo Kawa. And then defensive line wise, uh, Zach Pickens is back. Jordan Birch is the name. I think recruiting fans will certainly remember. Um, Ellis and Sterling are gone. Uh, Anybari is gone. Anybari, fifteen percent pressure rate last year, uh, and is. I mean that that's uh he's credited with 15 uh, interceptions or deflections caused which is really pretty good. Uh are they can they hold I don't know, I, I don't want to ask it in a negative way. Can they be better on the D-line? You think they'll take a step back? Can they hold sir? What what's kind of your thought there? It looks like stats wise Kingsley's a pretty big hole. Yeah, they they need to do better uh, across the board as a group, um, and and that's going to be tough to do when you lose your best guy, your most productive guy, like you're throwing out all those numbers, and and they're they're pretty significant. But but they've got some some talented guys who could potentially come in and come close to replicating them. I think um, Jordan Strawn, who transferred from Georgia State last year uh, in 2020, he he was tied for the lead in the country in sacks. I think he had what, ten and a half that season. Yeah. Um, and, and he played played a pretty decent amount last year with Jordan Birch. And without getting too into the weeds about the rotation, uh, the, neither of those guys got a ton of pass rush opportunities, especially the first half to you know two thirds of the season. And I think some of that is because uh, Enbarre was just so good that way. So um, Jordan Birch, Jordan Strawn are, are the top two guys who who talented, but uh, really haven't shown it yet at, at South Carolina, maybe in flashes. Um, but, but those two guys uh, are, are going to step up and, and have the opportunity to, to fill, to fill that void. And, and maybe the depth isn't the best there They they got to transfer in Terrell Dawkins from NC state. Who's he had some success there. It wasn't always used in, in the best way as far as what suited his skill set. but uh, they're, they're going to allow him to, to maybe play uh, and, and do some things that, that really complement his game and, and, you know, inside at, at tackle with Zach Pickens and uh, Alex Huntley, Tonka Hemingway, they, they've got some, some pretty talented guys. Um, but maybe some of that production wasn't quite there last season with what they gave up on the ground, um, which is, you know, gives me a little bit of pause, I think. And I think a lot of folks around here, a little bit of pause with, with maybe how, how good that group actually is. So I, while talented, there's still something to prove uh, with those guys. Is it crazy to think that the offense could be better than the defense? I mean, I know that'd be a huge flip from where it was a year ago, but it, it just in talking to you, it almost sounds like the offense has a chance to be a better unit than the defense. I, I don't think that's too far fetched to say, bud. No, I, okay. I mean, they, you know, they, they addressed a lot of needs with the portal, and the majority of them were on the offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, maybe, maybe it's a little easier to go, go and pick out some, some good receivers as opposed to going and picking out some, some really good defensive ends and tackles because, you know, there aren't a lot of those guys. And, yeah. and when they are available, you know, the big boys want them too. So it's hard to go get them. But, uh, but yeah, I'm with you. I, I think we could be, you know, sitting here six, seven months from now talking about a, a, a really good offense and the defense, it, you know, it, they might be pretty good, but uh, you know, I, I think maybe pretty good is, is really the, the most realistic ceiling. Uh, at this point for for that side of the ball. We we don't talk a whole lot of special teams uh, on, on this show unless the special teams had a huge part in the teams, you know, winning or losing. Like we talked Nebraska because they've lost like every game due to special teams, I feel like. But uh, Parker White to me really stands out as a guy that made a a lot of clutch kicks in, in, in these tight games. Uh, one of the top five in the country in field goal efficiency. 
he's gone, correct? I have him as a cross off on, on, on my sheet. What what's uh, what's South Carolina going to do there? Yeah, they've got they're going to have a three man race. It was it was a two man battle during the spring because one of the guys who, who transferred from Arizona State was injured. Uh, Jack Luckhurst is his name. Um, so he'll be back in June and, and get into the mix with, with Mitch Jeter, who, who did some kickoffs last year as a scholarship guy and, and Alex Herrera, who's a, a, a local kid from, from here in Columbia, who's, who's a walk on, but um, seems to be firmly in the mix for, for that job. Um, Jeter's got a little more leg strength and, and probably just overall talent is, is a little bit better, but uh, Herrera is, is really accurate and, seems to be very consistent and, and I can't remember the exact percentages they were charted on throughout the spring, but uh, you know, I think it was in that high eighties is, is what those guys were making their kicks during spring practice. So um, obviously a lot different when, when you're doing it, on game day. but uh, yeah, it's, but, it's still it, encouraging though. Yeah. And, and, and they're, they seem to be encouraged by it. And, and when you have a coordinator and, and Pete Limbo, who's um, you know, a pretty renowned special teams guy, and and that's that is his job. He doesn't do special teams and coach, you know, linebackers or whatever. He's just so all special teams all the time. So uh, I think there's some value in, in that as well um, with, with that group across the board. Elmer Granahan, the big spur.com, the best source out there for South Carolina content. I know we'll be reading all all through the summer. We'll have to have you on again for the fall, do a little final season preview. Hell, really appreciate the time, man. Of course, bud. Thank you. All right, that's the bell. Cover three college football summer school is over for today, but don't worry. We'll be back soon with even more episodes filling you in on the top teams in college football. Please give us those five-star reviews on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Follow us on YouTube and on Twitter at Cover 3 Podcast, and we'll see you all soon.